so we can kind of think of this as a law and order episode. So let's talk about law and order episode, one that I've actually written they haven't picked up yet. And then we'll talk about how that pertains to criminal procedure, and how you might get something on a test dealing with little nuances to our law and order episode. Let's say I ask the witness, hey, you took a bribe for your testimony here today, didn't you? And the witness says, no, I didn't. Can I prove that the witness really did take a bribe with other evidence, with what we call extrinsic evidence, a document or the testimony of a different witness? That's the first question that I want you to think about with respect to each impeachment method. So what do I mean by you have to be able to comprehend? Well, you can't be operating under some type of mental impairment, mentally handicapped, or affected by a, a substance like drugs or alcohol. And now when I say affected by drugs or alcohol, look, I know plenty of people who are drunk at their wedding. That doesn't mean that they are not validly married. I'm talking about to the point at which you can't consent that you actually don't remember entering into that marriage. That could invalidate a marriage. If you were ever to have an exam question, it was about freedom of speech, and you didn't know what other rule to apply, use this one. If there's anything that you need to know as a framework for free speech analysis, it is the distinction the Supreme Court has drawn in content-based and content neutral laws. It's not only important to learn the law, but it is important to think about the skill of writing exams. And that is what it is. It's just a skill that you need to practice. And with more practice, you get better at it. So you need to think throughout this lecture, not only what the professor has been teaching you in family law, but what to expect on the exam from that professor. <music>